Hello everyone and welcome back to Beatly Tones Beatles channel. Lovely to have you here. Thanks for joining me for this video and I hope you're all doing well. So welcome to episode two of the Beatles compilation albums, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, where we have a little discussion about each album. And at the end, when we've done them all, we're going to do a ranking of all the compilation albums and see which ones are the winners, which ones are the losers and sort out the whole wheat from the chaff thing. So if you've been following proceedings, you'll know that we're doing shorter videos for this topic. And um, what I'll do is if you missed episode one, there'll be a link down in the description. And at the end of the video, there'll be uh, an end card for the whole playlist. So as we go through, the playlist will get longer and you can just click on that and watch the whole lot if you want. One thing that's crossed my mind while doing these videos about the compilation albums, and I wanted to hear your thoughts on it. Do you think the Beatles compilation albums are really made for us? By us, I mean sort of hardcore fans. You know, I, I assume that if you, you subscribe to a Beatles channel on YouTube that you are a Beatles head. So are they really made for us? You know, do we buy them just because we want to have everything or because the the packaging is nice or for for any any other reason? Do we get too sort of hung up about about compilation albums because they're not really meant for us. They're meant for the general public or to introduce people to the Beatles. Does it mean that every Beatles compilation album that's come out is essential for that time period because obviously if you know for me in 1976 the red and the blue album were the latest compilation albums to come out but if you discovered say the Beatles in 1980 when Beatles ballads came out and the Beatles ballads album turned someone onto the Beatles does that make that album important I'd, I'd be interested to, to hear your thoughts on that. So if you were a Beatles fan in 1973, you had a very expensive year because you had two albums from Paul, Red Rose Speedway and Band on the Run. You had Living in the Material World from George. You had Mind Games from John and you had the Ringo album from Ringo. And two Beatles compilations, double albums, also came out in 1973. These two, the Beatles 62 to 66 and the Beatles 67 to 70. So how did these albums come about? And there's a bit of a story to this. So in 1972, a company called Audiotape Inc. based in New Jersey put out a kind of box set of Beatles songs, totally unauthorised, containing 60 songs. Uh, across four LPs and then there was a there was a second volume as well of another another four LPs and um, this was like the first time that Beatles stuff across their career had been put out as a compilation album the albums were called the Beatles Alpha Omega and um, it was a TV and radio advertised campaign Here's a couple of pictures of what came out. So as you can see, it was advertised for just under $14. And it says uh, greatest hits A, A to Z. I'm struggling to think of any Beatles songs that actually began with Z. Maybe something or Zorbury Fields Forever. So the albums, which were about 60 tracks, um, plus a few solo songs that had come out uh, up to that point. Things like Bangladesh, Uncle Albert, uh, Imagine, Maybe I'm Amazed. They were also included on this album. Now, apparently it sounded absolutely awful. Um, the, the music was taken from the, the Capitol LPs uh, rather than the, the, the master tape. So obviously, uh, Capitol and Apple and particularly Alan Klein was not happy about this at all, <laughs> as you can imagine. And uh, of course, they sued Audio Tape Inc. and the albums were taken off the market. But a kind of a light bulb 
went off in Alan Klein's head uh, saying that, well, actually, this is a really great idea and there is a market there for it. So he spoke to the Beatles about putting out some compilations. They were just not interested at all uh, about what went on them or ha you know, having anything to do with them at all. Um, so he just basically got one of his office boys to put uh, a, you know, a, a set together, a track listing together. And he did a really good job, to be fair. He did a really good job. And when said office boy handed Klein the track listing, he probably said, yeah, very nice. Now go and make me a cup of tea. So these albums were Alan Klein's number one gift to the Beatles, probably the greatest thing that he ever did for the Beatles, but he's also the greatest thing that he ever did for me because these two albums became the first Beatles albums that I ever heard and ever bought. So let's deal with the, uh, the Red album first, Beatles 1962-66. Front cover is the famous Angus McBean uh, photo shoot at Manchester Square. This isn't the sa not the same picture that was used on uh, Please Please Me, but one from that sh from that shoot. And on the back where he went back to recreate the picture for the Get Back album again, not the one that was intended for Get Back, but another one from that from that shoot. The centerfold is a picture from uh, Mad Day Out. And on the red album, it's got a red tint. So as far as material that went on here, we had all original material. So there was no covers on this album at all, even though, you know, some covers were quite definitive in the, the Beatles story. Things like Twist and Shout was a, you know, a big song for the Beatles. You know, they started every gig with it um, for many, many years. And um, but no, that wasn't included. That wasn't included here. There was 26 songs and um, it covered all the UK singles plus key album tracks. Uh, Rubber Soul in particular was served very well with six songs. Norwegian Wood, uh, Drive My Car, Michelle, Nowhere Man, In My Life and Girl. Not very much from Revolver at all, only the singles, Yellow Submarine and Eleanor Rigby. So I think they missed the, missed the trick there, but they're obviously looking for the most, you know, commercial sounding songs. So the album came with a red inner sleeve with the lyrics printed on it. And we'll just have a look at the vinyl. I'll only show one one disc because they're you know both the same so it was on the apple label with a red background which was most lovely there's the other side the songs themselves sound really great really great they were taken from the original masters and uh, the it does sound it sounds really great still sounds really great my my copy i got mine in 1976 and uh it still looks good and still sounds really good as well and the album did very well it got to number 3 in the uk and it got to number 3 in the us billboard chart as well so you know all in all a great compilation so moving on to the Blue Album, 1967 to 70. The cover photos were reversed. So you had the 1969 picture of the Beatles looking all hairy on the front cover and the Please Please Me photo shoot on the back. The centrefold was the same uh, from the Mad Day Out. Uh, the only difference being that the on the Blue Album, the photo has got a kind of a blue tint to it. So let's have a look at what was on the album. So as with the Red Album, all the UK singles throughout the whole period was on the album, plus key album tracks. So from Sgt Pepper, there was four tracks, the title track with a little help from my friends, 
Lucy in the Sky and A Day in the Life. From Magical Mystery Tour, we had Fall on the Hill, I Am the Warus, um, Magical Mystery Tour. We had the B-side of Hey Jude, the fast version of Revolution. Only three tracks from the White Album, um, and one of those three tracks that they thought was important enough to put on this album was Obladi Oblada. Um, you had the the Get Back single and its B-side, Don't Let Me Down, and the B-side of the Ballad of Johnny Oko, Old Brown Shoe. Four songs from Abbey Road, Come Together, Something, Octopus's Garden, Here Comes the Sun. And finally, three tracks from Let It Be, Let It Be, Across the Universe, and The Long and Winding Road. So a fantastic track listing. All in all, not everything that's essential is included on this record, but a very rounded view of what the Beatles were up to in the period 1967 to 70 is here. Let's just have a little look at the vinyl. Again, it came in a blue inner sleeve with the lyrics. I hope you can see that. And the vinyl, this time with the blue background, obviously. And it does look really nice. So, a little bit of history, or my personal history with, with this album. As I say, it was the first one that I got. A friend of mine from school had these albums, and at this time, I, you know, serious music for me was Sparks and 10CC and he let me borrow these albums and uh, I took them home and I played them and I played, I decided to play the blue one first just because, you know, it looked more modern and I suppose that's that's because it was. But, you know, when I put it on, I mean, I, you know, I, I think that I'd heard Beatles music before in the background, certainly, you know, Yellow Submarine as a kid, I heard, I, but I probably just didn't know that they were by the Beatles. So when I listened to this record, you know, you put on track one, side one, Strawberry Fields Forever. And that as a person getting into music seriously for the first time, the first song that I hear by the Beatles is Strawberry Fields Forever. And I'm like, my mind is just completely blown by this sort of, you know, this lone nasal voice, the poetic words that he's singing and this unfamiliar instrumentation that's splintering out of my speakers and, and filling my room with colour. It was just a real eureka moment for me. It was like, what have I discovered here? And I can distinctly remember at the end of Strawberry Fields, just taking the stylus off the record and just going back to the beginning two or three times I listened to Strawberry Fields before I eventually moved on and listened to the rest of the album. It was that good and it had that much impact on me. And as I went on, you go and discover other things that, you know, the melody of, of Penny Lane, the sort of the sadness of fall on the hill, the musicality of While My Guitar Gently Weeps, the, you know, the poetic beauty of Across the Universe, and the raucous, crazy, going bonkers at the endness of Hey Jude. I mean, just wondrous song after wondrous song. Just an absolute fantastic experience to sort of hear all this for the first time and I, I was hooked. And without wanting to get sort of too emotional about it, I think it's fair to say that this this album changed my life. It really, it really did. My own personal magical mystery tour bus was just pulling out of the car park and here we are sort of 45 years later. I'm still waiting for that bus to stop and, and for me, get off and it doesn't really look like that's going to happen anytime soon. And just like 1962-66, this album also sounds really great, it still sounds really, really great. And in 1978, they brought out a coloured vinyl 
version of these two albums, um, which I got. And even the coloured vinyl, you know, in 1978, coloured vinyl was rubbish. It didn't sound great. But these records sound really good. So I thought I'd just show you the, the coloured vinyl as well, because they are really quite beautiful. It's the red one. And here's the blue. It is really beautiful. Looks fantastic. I think I think blue wins. What do you think? So so that's really it. 67 to 70, it got to number two in the UK charts, got to number one in the US Billboard chart. So it did it did very well indeed. And shortly after their release, uh, the Beatles gave Alan Klein his marching orders. So that was some sort of thank you, really. So for me, what the Red Album and the Blue Album represents is your ultimate starter pack for any Beatles fan. You know, a Martian comes down from Mars and says, what are Beatles? Because that's how Martians speak. He says, what are Beatles? And you give him these two double albums. And although it doesn't tell him everything he needs to know about the Beatles, you know, it tells him quite a lot. So for me, the Red and the Blue album are absolutely indispensable. Thanks very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it and you're seeing the channel for the first time, why not subscribe, get involved, join in the fun, give the video a like and hit that notification bell. That would be absolutely fantastic. Please join me in a couple of days for episode three, where I'm going to be going through all the compilations that I call the genre compilations. And those are the ones that came out between 1976 and 1982. As usual, please tell me your thoughts on these two albums. And that very important question that was at the beginning of the video, uh, tell me down in the comments. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you for episode three.